Uh, good morning YouTube Welcome back to Dirty Dave's Garage Getting ready to take a spin on the 2021 Ninja 1000 SX Beautiful piece of machinery We're going to take a trip around the Daytona Loop while we're down here Hopefully you guys enjoy it We'll talk about the bike a little bit Talk about some of the pros and cons I've run into with it Had it for about a month and a half now I guess but didn't get to ride it a whole lot up north. The weather wasn't real good. But we're going to take it out today. See what kind of a uh, mood she's in. Hopefully get some pretty scenery while it's not raining here for a change. But uh, just got through Jeep week down here. Lots of cool Jeeps. Didn't bring mine down this trip, but... We'll get it down here next year. All right, I think we're set. Let's get out of here and get on the road. Hopefully I can find this loop. geared up ready to go hopefully the weather cooperates been nice down here the last few days should be nice all with all this week I'm hoping you guys can hear me okay I got the windshield up on the helmet for now put it down once we get out on the road We are in South Daytona. About two miles from the coast as the crow flies. One of my favorite times of year to be down here because it's not ungodly hot. Using the Kawasaki quick shift, clutchless. I don't know if you can see that when I'm going through the gears. Love the display on this thing. Hopefully you can see it. Nice clear readout. You could change whether you want a white background or dark background. Keeps track of your miles per gallon. Got it connected to the Rideology app via Bluetooth. We'll see if that works when we get back. little tidbit if you're in the Daytona area this is where they do the motorcycle riding training courses in this big parking lot back here see them every Sunday they bring a bunch of bikes out teach people how to ride tried to talk the wife into doing it she's changed her mind on uh, getting a bike I just closed the helmet so hopefully things will quiet down for you So the bike's been running really good. A couple qualms I have about it so far are uh, the cruise control can sometimes be cantankerous. Doesn't always want to go on. I'm going to try and hit it, hit the set button now. Okay, this time it worked. A lot of times it just doesn't want to lock in, and I I think it's something to do with the throttle over here just being a little touchy. If you don't have it just right it doesn't want to lock in and I've I've seen some other reviews of folks having the same kind of problems with it it can be a little annoying if you're on a long ride and want to use the cruise control 
it'll get it set eventually but sometimes it takes a couple tries one thing I do like about this is it's got a positive neutral lock so when you're out of stop you see I'm in first gear when you click up it goes into neutral it won't go past that's kind of nice wish I had that on my Harley I tell you what though ever since I switched to that uh, uh, AMS oil fluids in my Harley it, it definitely finds neutral a lot easier now So there may be something to some of the hype on that uh, AMS oil. Hopefully if I follow this, the road we're supposed to go on, We'll see some nice homes, some nice backcountry roads back here, some nice uh, waterways. There's some cool parts of, we're actually north, we're going to be north of Daytona in Ormond Beach for this loop ride. Been averaging about 42 to 40 miles of the gallon on the bike. Not bad, and that's mixed driving. Some just driving like this, some driving like an idiot to see what the bike will do. We're still kind of in the break-in period, so I've been taking it easy, easy on the bike for the most part. We only got 270 miles on it. Probably gonna need to stop and get some gas somewhere. I only got a half a tank. Well, that's enough to take this little ride. We'll get some get some gas when we're almost home. Wife and I tried to do this ride last year on the Harley. Oh. But uh, I guess they had had a lot of rain and the road was flooded out when we got halfway through the state park. And it was like knee deep water. We sat, we pulled the bike over, we didn't go through it. But uh, we watched other people go through it. And it was quite entertaining. I had a, saw a couple guys on, on Harleys come through and when they got out the other side they were soaked from their knees down. I, I wouldn't have taken my bike through it because it's brackish water, it's got salt in it. Uh, can't be good for your vehicles. But I saw some fool drive through in a Maserati and I wouldn't be surprised if he had some water coming in his doors. One thing about the quick shift, it won't let you upshift if you're decelerating. Just so you know, it only upshifts when you're maintaining throttle or increasing throttle. And we are riding in sport mode at the moment. There are three different modes, factory modes. There's road mode, sport mode, and rain mode which basically just changes how your analog brakes and whatnot respond to the road conditions. But there is also a owner configurable rider mode that you can turn everything off and just have it be a flat out bike with no traction control, no analog interference. Other, I guess the, the front still works. I think this is where we want to turn, but We'll go down and we'll try this. We'll try this road. And I'm pretty sure we want to turn left before we go over the big bridge up ahead. And 
this, this is the old part of Daytona, downtown Daytona. During bike week, this place is a madhouse. I think this is the road we want right here. Yep, Beach Street. And we're just going to follow that all the way. Got to watch out for people like that down here. Always deciding at the last minute to make a turn. And they're from down here. I think they'd know. Well, they're from Jacksonville, it looks like. I think they'd know where they were going. view of old Daytona some of the shops downtown here and we are still on the mainland you have to cross one of those bridges they have them all over the place to get over to the coast but we'll be coming back that way we'll we'll cross over down the road I believe somewhere down here is the original Daytona Harley Davidson they opened up a new one up on 95 a little farther up the road <clears throat> we may have already passed it or it could be down a little bit further we'll find out we'll follow the police officer here at a safe distance beautiful day Seventy three degrees according to my uh, display. I hope we ain't going to be hitting red lights the whole way up this road. Going to make for an extremely boring video. Time that one, right? This bike shop. Indian. All you Indian fans. Pretty bikes. That's about all I know about them. Plenty of bike shops around here, that's for sure. to make a little stop up here and just check everything make sure everything is working as soon as I see a place where we can safely pull off
looks like a good place to stop for a second. This is Granada. Okay. I think we're heading the right direction. Come on, light. Starting to warm up down here. Got the mesh riding gear on today. <clears throat> Joe Rocket, Phoenix Ion, pants and jacket. Come with armor already in them. Good hot, hot weather gear. I bought these so in the summertime when it's hot and humid up in Maryland, I can don a pair of shorts and just throw these pants over top and still have some protection in case of something bad happens. The knees are armored. The hips are armored in the pants. Jacket has a back pad, elbow and shoulder pads. I actually took the armor that came in this out and put in a leather jacket that I bought down here for riding in cooler weather and uh, just ordered some aftermarket CE2 armor off Amazon and they're made out of memory foam. I don't think they're quite as strong as uh, what came in the Joe Rocket jacket but it was such a pain in the butt. Putting the armor in that leather jacket, I don't want to have to go through pulling it out and putting back in here. So I just put the aftermarket armor in this jacket. Pray to God it does its job if I ever need it to. It's got to be better than nothing. So I see these signs everywhere. Defend the loop, defend the loop. I hope they're not planning on doing something to this and messing up this road there's not a lot of really cool places to ride for scenic rides on the bike anyway in florida everything's flat for the most part but there are some beautiful water rides intercoastal rides rides through the oh, somebody nailed an armadillo there it looks like rides through the uh marshes and whatnot little bridges that go over and you can see some really cool stuff it's beautiful homes back here. These are brand new. Look like they're building some. <clears throat> and we're getting into the loop with the trees that hang over the road. Again, on a hot day, you want to go out for a ride. Nice place to come because it's nice and shady. Cruise control seems to be working pretty good right now. I was mentioning earlier, don't know if it got recorded, but uh, I've noticed it's a little sketchy where uh, sometimes the cruise goes on when you push the button, sometimes it doesn't. And I've read that other riders of the 2020 and up Ninja 1000s have similar uh, issues with it being a little funny. I don't know what's up with that. It may have something to do with what your hand's doing on the throttle. I know the, th the throttle's a little touchy. And if you're not at a constant rate of speed, damn, there's another one. It may not want to lock in when you hit the cruise button and set the cruise. I never had cruise on a motorcycle until I bought my Harley and it kind of spoiled me because it is nice when you're on a long stretch of road just to hit the cruise button and set your speed and take a drink or whatever. The display on this bike is awesome if you haven't seen it. I've got it with the light background right now, but if you push the reset button, 
it changes to the dark contrast background gives you your your mileage we're getting 56 50 miles to the gallon right now averaging of course we're just putting along but uh, very clear display got your rpms here and you can set set a limit on your rpms from the factory when it's brand new it was only set at 4,000 so it was hard to go over 60 mile an hour that thing blinking it'll blink when it hits the limit once I pass the initial I don't know first hundred miles you can increase it a little bit and it's okay to go over they just say don't do it for any extended length of time so but just getting it home from the dealership I had to drive 65 because that was the speed limit and people were passing me like I was sitting still but I was trying to be nice because it was a brand new bike didn't want to mess anything up let it break in properly but that damn rpm meter <laughs> was blinking at me the whole time because i was going over 4k on the tack but once i got past the uh the initial 100 miles i jumped it up to 5500 and unless i'm really motoring it uh generally stays it doesn't flash at me Overall, it's a nice bike though. It's very comfortable. The riding position's nice for sport touring. Not completely upright like you might be on an adventure bike, but it's a little lower to the ground. Handles really nice. Extremely responsive. Gobs of power. Maybe we'll get a chance to open her up on some of the straightaways when we get further out of town. Silky smooth. That motor is smooth as ice. Here we come. We're coming through the uh, the trees. I hope the road isn't flooded out. It's been a few. We got a lot of rain earlier. Uh, three, like three days ago. Hopefully, it's settled down by now. I mean, we got a lot of rain, like two and a half inches overnight, and it was coming down in buckets. Looks like they cut some of these trees back. You see now my cruise doesn't want to set. There it go. Nope. Maybe it wants a higher gear. Maybe I just need to hold the button longer. It could be it. Might just have to hold it down for a second or two, not just hit it. It's working now. Moka State Park. Now I believe this is where we had to stop last time I think we're getting close you can see the waterways I think I was right past this bridge because I think we pulled over right here and watched everybody coming through this straightaway which was flooded out <clears throat> we saw people coming through in Miatas 
and when they got through the other side there was just water pouring out of their cars I, I couldn't believe look, it's pretty high right now you can see how easy it would be for that water to get over the road it's close but hey we're gonna make it through today beautiful country All right, we finally got out of the way. Now we can maybe have a little fun and pray to God there's no cops around. <clears throat> Beautiful homes out here too. I don't know if I'd want to have a house with all that water sitting out front breeding mosquitoes all year long though. Single get up and go. Could be a nice spot for a top end speed test. Now, I don't see any place where a cop could hide. Not that I would ever do anything like that. It's a nice long straightaway, you just got to worry about critters running out in front of you. And that's pretty much anywhere. Tell you the the roll-on power on this bike, even at 60, I didn't have to downshift or anything. You just twist the throttle within seconds. You're gonna pass anything that's in your way. The scooter rider out, enjoying the weather. idiot path trying to pass here. Thank God he saw us. Changed his mind. Oh, he's got to be watching. Some crazy drivers down at Daytona. Fit in the blue hairs. It's the crackheads or somebody smoked something else that's just not paying attention or driving responsibly. out-of-towners not familiar with the traffic patterns
because this is uncharted territory for me. Like I said last time, that road was flooded. We couldn't make it through to the other side, so uh, never got to see what was over here. That's kind of neat. HC safe and lock getting some free advertising on Dirty Dave's Garage Also has a lean indicator on it. for John Broadman Road, I believe. Should be coming up soon, I think. Nice new road. This uh, Phoenix Ion jacket and pants. It's like having nothing on. It's very well ventilated. Mess jacket. Cool part about the jacket is it comes with a zip out rain liner, but also a zip out insulated like vest portion. So it's got three layers to it. So you can even ride it in the cooler weather. So it, technically it's like a three season jacket. I've got jeans on. 
under the pants because it's not really hot down here yet. I think it's got up to maybe 82 while we've been down here, which for me is perfect. But I'm sure even <laughs> even in 90 degree weather over jeans, it'd probably be fine. Like I said, it's nothing for the most part except over the knees and near where your exhaust would be. It's got some heavier materials so they don't melt, but it's a ballistic mesh. So if you go down, it'll slide and keep your skin on you, hopefully. I think this is where we're turning. Oh, traffic circle. I hate these damn things on the bike. Shit, I hate them in the car. So I don't think we wanted one north. But we'll see where it takes us. Nice road. Playing the traffic on. I'm gonna watch for people dodging around these slow moving vehicles. Get out around them. Ah, free and clear. Just how I like it. Doing 67, about 4200 RPM, six gear. Those were averaging 53 miles, 51 miles a gallon at this speed. So I'm guessing you could fill the tank on this thing. I think it's got like a five gallon tank. If you drove like an old man like I usually do, you could probably get some serious range out of it. Oh, that's nice. to find our way back to the coast here shortly and start heading back home and the wife's going to wonder what happened to me. enjoying the ride on this road though. Not in a hurry to get off of it and get back into the stop and go traffic around Ormond and Daytona.
definitely got to start heading back home. Might be time to pull over, get a little gas, set the GPS. Darn, we missed the gun show. station around here somewhere. We still got half a tank though. Guess it will be alright. Flagler Beach. At least I know where that is. So I think we overshot our turn off, folks. They love their guns down in Florida. Almost every corner has a gun store, it seems. But I'm okay with that. Dirty Dave is a Second Amendment supporter for legal gun owners. Oh yay, get to follow a trash truck, which is always fun on a bike, hopefully he'll turn off. If you're ever up in Bunnell, Bunnell, Florida, there's a place called, oh what's the name of it? got a something gourmet it'll come to me in a minute it's a little like a roadside dive of a looking food joint they don't have indoor dining Bantam Bantam uh, gourmet or Bantam chef just look up Bantam and uh, <laughs> it's just an old rundown building you walk up it almost reminds you of a Dairy Queen, but they serve fresh seafood and you can get a fish sandwich there with fresh fried fish. It's the biggest damn sandwich I think I've ever seen. It's just huge. It makes a hell of a meal and it's very reasonably priced. No, oh, thank you, jackass. I'm thinking the problem I've been having with the cruise is you have to actually hold the button down for a couple seconds.
gorgeous day clear sunny warm but not hot it's beautiful out here Sure you've seen in other videos but this windshield you push this button down you can move it up and down another complaint these mirrors they're a little little far out of reach brakes are awesome can't complain about that analog brakes very sticky they'll stop you in a hurry if you need to Pretty drive when there's no cars on the road. There's some nice long open stretches of road. This is the same road you can take. We've driven up it on the Harley to St. Augustine. It's about an hour and 20 minutes away, maybe an hour and 15 minutes. But it's a cool little town, St. Augustine. Got a fort there. Old fort from probably the 18th century. A lot of little shops, craft shops and whatnot. A lot of places to eat. It's a neat historic little town. Nice day trip. thing that sucks about this road is there aren't many passing lanes and I would love to dust these cars <laughs> just don't see an opportunity coming up soon a lot of cars to pass you get a nice long open stretch of road I don't think it'll be a problem it's only three of them Once we get past that giant water tower, the Flagler Bleach Beach uh, Tower, there might be some straightaways. We might be able to get around these folks. Yeah, coming up on them. Whether there's a passing lane or not remains to be seen. Oh yeah, gotta watch for turtles too. That can really screw up your day, especially on a bike. And I just saw in the news down here the other day, a woman was driving down uh, one of the highways not far from my home, and a turtle flew through her windshield. Came through the windshield, hit her in the head. She had to go to the hospital, get stitches. 
the turtle survived, she survived, and apparently this isn't the first time this has happened. It happened uh, a few years ago, and what they think happens is uh, another car hit the turtle on the road, threw it up in the air, and it went through the windshield. Also happened up in Georgia, so there's three known occurrences of turtles going through people's windshields. Never knew that was a road hazard to worry about. Interesting little trivia fact for you. I see. Nothing but double yellow lines. But that's okay. The scenery is awesome, as you can tell. Kind of reminds me of California, but backwards. Now we're in Volusia County. speeding up now because they know I'm going to pass them. Well, at least they're doing the speed limit. been on the stretch of road on the Harley and there hasn't been a car in sight and we just open them up and haul ass. Don't look like that's gonna happen today. I gotta say I'm really liking this new Bell helmet. Bell qualifier DLX. It's comfortable, it's light. Not the quietest helmet I've owned, but I'm on the bike. I'm not expecting it to be, sound like I'm sitting in a Mercedes Benz cruising down the road.
little breezy out today. old Scooby vans. It's kind of cool. Uh, coming into Ormond Beach now, I believe. Kind of back where we started this journey from, except now we're on the coastal side, beach side, not on the mainland.
Ever seen shops with an outdoor lift? Seen quite a few garages down here, I guess, to increase their repair capacity. They actually install some lifts outside and work on the cars outside. Kind of cool. Panky Panky Lounge. Ooh, bet you meet some classy gals in there. Ormond Beach. We stayed up here a few times before we had our place here. Nice little area. Couple sketchy parts, just like Daytona. Wait a minute there, Pops. drive through town a bit before we head back to the house as long as the battery and the storage holds up so you guys can see a little bit of the Ormond area get out of that right lane because there always seems to be a vehicle stopped in that right lane mail truck deliveries all kinds of other bullshit We stayed there one year. But 
to just to kill some time tell you a little story my wife's family had been coming down here since she was a little kid and her parents actually bought a mobile home down here in a 55 and up mobile home park not far from where our house is and so she got me in the habit of coming down here and they drive down from Maryland they would drive down several times a year when we first started dating she brought me down here and it was like a 12 13 hour ride I thought I was gonna die I'd never sat in a car that long in my life I don't think and uh, I'm like I don't know how you guys do this but we did it the more we did it the easier it got and now it's not that big a deal you just get used to spending time in the car and we've flown down a couple times well her parents had the place for a while and when the kids were younger we'd bring them down every year for vacation and stay in their little mo beat up mobile home take the kids to Disney World take them to the beach it was nice and it didn't cost anything well then South Daytona decided or I don't know if it was the county or the state they needed more stormwater management ponds and they used eminent domain to take over half of the uh, zip around this car real quick half of the mobile home park and turn it into a pond stormwater pond so my in-laws lost their place and I don't know how much money the county gave them for their uh, trailer. They didn't own the lot, but they did reimburse them for their trailer. So they ended up buying timeshares with the money, which I think is a waste of money. But they had so many points with these timeshares, they would just give them to us every year to go on vacation since we didn't have any place to go. So we went to some different places with the kids every year. But we always missed Daytona. We like it down here. So when I was financially able, I said, I'm going to buy a place down there. And we ended up, we wanted to buy a house in Port Orange, but we ended up in South Daytona because at the time, this was like five years ago, 2016, I think, 2015. Even then, it was tough to find a house down here. And now with the COVID thing going on, the real estate market is insane. People were paying 20, 30, 40, 50 grand more than asking price just to get a house. Because they want to they move down here. They want to escape places like New York and Connecticut and Michigan where the Democrats have ruined their states. They are all about control. So we bought this little house. And uh, every time when we were hunting for a house, every time I'd find something I was interested in, I'd call my real estate agent say hey I want to go look at this house he called me back like half hour later David's already under a contract I'm like are you kidding it just went on the market yesterday and he's like I'm telling you man they go fast so I didn't have a lot of requirements I just wanted a little you know preferably a three bedroom two bath house it could be a fixer upper as long as everything worked I don't care if it looked didn't care if it looked like hell I'm pretty handy around the house and uh, I wanted a garage wanted a fenced in backyard for the dogs I wanted a walk-in shower and my wife wanted a screened-in porch of some type or lanai so we found one pretty cheap and it needed some work it was outdated it was built in the seven oh my other requirement was I wanted a block home because of the hurricanes down here so we found one and we bought it like five years ago and I've been fixing it up ever since I've redone the bathrooms did a poor man's kitchen remodel where I uh, because it had this ugly 1970s cabinets with the fake laminate wood green dark wood green panels with the grooves cut into them so I came down here for a couple months when I was recovering from my illness working from home and uh, you know, I worked on the computer overnight, all night long. 
But while I was down here, I took all the doors off the cabinets, cleaned everything up real good, sanded them down, filled all those old grooves in with body putty for cars to make them solid, and just painted them all. My neighbor, who did custom cabinetry for years, he helped me do some molding around everything and put uh, hidden uh, hinges on the doors, took the old external ugly hinges off, cleaned them out filled all the holes and painted it. It looks great. Fixed, uh, fixed the laminate going around the counter. Had been cracked and chipped and busted up over the years before we owned it. I just ordered some strips of laminate that kind of matched the countertop. We had gotten some quotes on, you know, having like new cabinet doors put in and a new countertop. Everybody wanted like five, six thousand dollars. I think I spent two hundred bucks on supplies. Just refresh the kit. It's fine now though. And uh, I could rent the place out full time if I wanted to. Or sell it. Because it's almost doubled in value in five years. That's how the market is down here. So we're kind of scared to sell it and not be able to find something else because we were to sell it and just sit on that money put it in the stock market or something for a year or two until this market settles back down and have a nice chunk of change to put down on something a little nicer but the other thought is we, we definitely want to get out of Maryland and the taxes there and the politics there the place is run by some of the most corrupt people around Democrat controlled of course but um, thought actually about buying a place out in the boonies in West Virginia with some property around it and then just keeping our little house our smaller house down here for the winter get out of the cold there's some nice places to ride bikes in West Virginia. Nice hilly terrain, mountains, curves. Second Amendment friendly. No permit needed for concealed carry down there. This is the, uh, oh, what are they called? The uh, Ocean Walk in Daytona. They have a really cool, um, they have a lot of shops and places to eat in there but they have a band show and they get some pretty good bands here during the tourist seasons they sit outside you can buy some of them they sell tickets to if you want to sit up close sometimes they get national acts a lot of tribute bands we saw a stones tribute there and an eagles tribute the stones tribute was really good the eagles band tribute they were so so I used to be in a band back in the day that did a lot of Eagles. There you go. And uh, not trying to brag, but we killed it. We had some killer harmonies. These guys were a little flat on the harmonies. And I kind of, if you're going to do Eagles, you better be spot on with the harmonies. The guitar's tough enough, but the vocals are what make that band, in my opinion. If you're going to do it, you better be able to sing on key and in harmony without even thinking about it. International Speedway Boulevard. If we were to hang a right here, it would take us up to the racetrack. Wife and I went up there the other day, last week, for... Uh, <clears throat> actually, over the weekend. It was beach week here last week. A lot of cool jeeps but we walked they let us walk through the tunnels to get onto the infield at the racetrack they had tons of vendors there selling all kinds of jeep stuff you could rent a little mock race car and ride it around the track we didn't look into how much that cost but i'm sure it wasn't cheap us 
away from all the cars. This is A1A Coastal Highway. Just following the ocean. slow down there's always cops through here since this is the tourist district Biggins, Biggins Gentlemen's Clubs. I got one of their t-shirts. For free, long story. Jet Set Tattoos, got some artwork done there. Wife just got her ears pierced, double helix pierced yesterday. Little birthday present for her, her birthday's coming up. Place looks like the old, I think it's the Capitol Records Tower, it used to be out in California. They have a rooftop dining room you can see out over the ocean. I always wanted to try that. I've never done that. Might have to do that with the wife while we're here. passing folks driving bikes I notice uh, sometimes Harley guys which <laughs> I am you wave to them they don't wave back 
you just give them a high five or whatever, you know. I waved almost every biker if my hands aren't busy. And I always try to wave back. But some of them just have an attitude, it seems. Which is utterly ridiculous because we're all in this game of death together. Try to be have fun, enjoy our freedoms, and make it home in one piece. And I think that brotherhood should extend among all bikers, regardless of what you're driving, because it's the love of the road that keeps us all doing it, versus our better sense. And, uh, maybe it's just that they don't have the skills to take their hands off the handlebars, which is cool. If, you know, you feel it's a bad move to take your hands off the handlebar, I'm not going to fault anybody for that. But if you just think you're too cool on your Harley to wave to somebody that's not on a Harley, I think you're a dumbass. There, I said it. Considering half the people I know on Harleys have the riding skills of a three-year-old retard on a tricycle. Yeah, if you can't tell Dirty Dave's very opinionated about certain subjects. I also hate litter bugs. I can't stand to see somebody throwing trash out of their damn car on the road or in a parking lot and leaving your shopping cart in the middle of a parking lot. Things that really burn me up. We're going to take another bridge over to the mainland and start heading back to the house before the wife wonders where the hell I am. This is where we usually come in to go to the beach. If you cut right across there, it takes you right down. You can drive right on the beach. This is why we, another reason we love Daytona. You don't need to have an oceanfront property to enjoy the ocean. And I'll be honest with you, I've done the condo thing, rentals. We looked at buying a condo. I could have bought a condo down here, but condo fees are insane. And they can raise them whenever they want. It's ridiculous. Don't buy a condo, people. Bad investment, in my opinion. Sometimes you get lucky and make money on them, but... Nice thing about Daytona is you can have a house on the mainland. I don't have any homeowners association, but uh, in, we're in South Daytona. They have... Uh, pretty strict laws you know so people got to keep keep their yards and their houses up somewhat but they aren't dictators you know you're not going to get yelled at if you want to hang an American flag in your front yard or anything like that well, some of these homeowners associations are crazy about that stuff but, uh, going to the beach we load up the car we just leave our beach chairs in the car while we're down here and an umbrella. Sometimes we take a canopy if there's more than just two of us. Take a big unfolding canopy and uh, take, take a cooler, some food. Go drive on the beach, park the car. The, the, be the sand there on the beach is packed down so hard it's almost like driving on pavement until you turn off the park. You gotta be careful, you don't wanna grind and go too far off the, the like main path because the sand gets softer and your wheels can sink in if you don't have four-wheel drive, but uh, you, know, you ain't dragging an armload of stuff down, walking down from the condo to the beach, trying to keep the kids together, you know, if you got kids, you know, our kids are grown now, don't have to worry about that, but it's really nice to be able to just pop open the back of the car, pull your chair out, plop it down, and sit the hell down and start enjoying the beach takes a lot of the work out of it. Because I'm telling you, when you, you know, if you're thinking about living down here, the beach novelty wears off after a while. You're not going to be going to the beach every day. And I explain that to my wife because I've spent a lot more time down here than she has because I have a lot more vacation time where my job is 
which she's not crazy about, but what are you going to do? I'm not going to take vacation time and sit in the house up north and do nothing. And she gets that. She was a little upset when I came down here for two months before, though. But, got a lot done at the house. will say this about this bike. I wish the six gear was more of an overdrive gear. Because I'm used to riding my Harley. I get up on 95 going 80 mile an hour and it's barely purring. And it's just a nice, smooth, quiet ride for the most part. It's comfortable. I feel like once you get past 65 on this thing, I'm just not used to the high RPMs, I guess. A lot more vibration to it. It's smooth, but I feel like the engine's working harder than it needs to be to go those speeds. And I understand they do it for performance, but you know, couldn't they have re-geared it? So gears one through five, or, or add an extra gear, add an overdrive gear. That would make these bikes so much more efficient, I would think. You had a seventh gear just for overdrive, for being out on the highway, going on a long ride. Just think how what your mileage would be like. This thing purring along at 3,500 mile, 3,500 RPM or 3,000 RPM going 70 miles an hour. That would be awesome. Think about that Kawasaki. when you're trying to turn here people get in your way and they'll stop there they don't have to stop but they stop thinking you're gonna cut them off if you're starting to make a left-hand turn and then I'm afraid to pull out in front of them because you don't know if they're gonna go or not I hate being behind these vans like this that you can't see around. And we got a train. Thank God it just finished though. Oh, I'm ready for a drink and a bathroom break. Thanks. Wife might want to go to the beach, but I think I'm beached out for this. Been there the last two days. Pops, my feet got sunburnt. I might just go back out on the bike a little later and take another ride. She can go if she likes. at the end of our ride folks hopefully we got some helpful insight if you're thinking about picking up one of these ninjas it's a nice bike I really like it yeah the cruise I don't think it's really an issue the cruise control I think the problem 
was having is I just wouldn't hold the button long enough, but I always get it to work. Other than that, it rides great. Comfortable seat. Now, I bought the optional storage, uh, or I'm sorry, the side bags for it, the hard saddle bags, panniers for you European viewers. But uh, I don't have them on today. We'll get a picture of the bike before we put her in the garage. Let's get a look at it. This is where the saddlebags hang. Diablo Black Ninja 1000 SX. Nice little scooter. So if you have any questions or comments, put them below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll see you guys back. Come see us. And we'll see you next time on Dirty Days Garage.